My name is Crystal Baldwin. I am the mother of Mason Baldwin, who was a freshman and president in Oxford High School on November 30th, 2021. He was in room 256. I will never forget the moment my husband told me that my son had texted saying somebody was shooting in the school. At first, my husband thought it was a joke. It wasn't until I got online to a local Oxford mom Facebook group and confirmed my worst fear and what my son texted. This is when my worst nightmare started, and I called him immediately to make sure he was okay. The words he spoke when he answered will haunt me for the rest of my life. I asked him if he was okay. He said, Mom, had I been standing where I was 10 seconds longer, it could have been me. My heart sank. I was grateful he was locked down. I told him to stay calm and I would be in touch. I had to get a hold of Madison. I texted her. No response. Called her, no answer. Called my son back to see if he knew where she was. He said he would try to get a hold of her. I told him her phone just rang and rang. He blamed it on her phone battery always being dead. I told him this was different as the phone was ringing and not just going straight to voicemail. Madison is my niece and goddaughter, so making sure that she was okay was a priority for me. She and my son were finally in the same school they rode to and from school every day, so I needed to make sure she was okay. The relationship they were forming was more of a brother-sister relationship rather than cousins. I had this growing up, and I love that they were able to experience this. A little backstory with Madison is I was in the hospital the day she was born. I witnessed her taking her first breath. She was not only my niece, goddaughter, but felt more like a daughter to me. The thought of anything happening to her made me sick to my stomach. It was not until hours later that we were informed of what happened to her. Once my son was finally evacuated from that school, it seemed like an eternity, but finally was able to hug him. I took him out of my ear into the car with my husband. He told me that what the officers told him as they were leaving room 256, they said not to look down if he did not want to be traumatized as there was a body outside the door. He said there was blood on his shoes. I could not visibly see it due to them being all black. I went back into Meyer as we were not leaving until we knew Madison was safe. We were all over that store just trying to get a clue. We were told to keep watching for the buses coming from the high school. Little did we know my son's bus was the last to arrive. However, once most of the store was clear, they called three families' names, Madison, Tate, and Hannah. We were led into a very small office as if we were sardines in a tin can. The officer just came right out to say we have news on the three students. They are deceased. In that moment, my whole world stopped. I heard the words and froze as if the world was spinning and I was standing still. Then came the cries and screaming from Madison's parents. The father of another student punched through the clock on the wall and continued to punch all the way down the wall until he was on the floor. I knew I was needed to try to comfort where I could in disbelief that this was in fact a real life nightmare. I had to then make phone calls to let people know as we had so many people looking for Madison. Those were the worst phone calls I've ever had to make. My husband was in the parking lot in my car. He just screamed and started punching the dashboard. That is how my kids found out that their cousin was killed that day. Both came into Meyer to confirm I was not lying. The look on their faces was just devastating, walking slowly, faces red and tears streaming down their faces. I say all of this to paint a picture of the nightmare this 15 year old caused on November 30th, 2021. I had a freshman, Mason, starting his high school journey, a time where he should be enjoying the last four years of school before becoming an adult, trying to decide what he wants to do with his life. My niece, a senior that should have been doing college visits and finalizing applications to these colleges. She knew what she wanted out of her life and what she was going to do once she graduated. She wanted to become a behavioral analyst and to study neuroscience, something she will never have the chance to do. No child should ever have to experience losing a cousin, friend, or daughter ever. Now here we are, almost two years later, and still dealing with the effects of what this person did. Last school year, my son missed close to 60 days of school and was barely passing his classes. My child was always A's and B's, but last year, D's and E's. 
I'm grateful he passed, but things should not be this way. The thought that defend the defendant can get his GED disgusts me. I feel he lost that privilege when he walked out of that bathroom and started shooting. My son will graduate. However, Madison never did. Matter of fact, I attended her graduation and witnessed her mother and father accept her diploma on her behalf. She should have walked that stage and accepted it herself. Her chair should have been her sitting there and not with a picture of her in a basket of flowers. Madison was one amazing human being. She is one that people should take after and aim to be like. She was artistic, funny, caring, compassionate, driven, and overall just great. She was a large piece of our family puzzle. Now that she is gone, our family is broken. There are no longer family get-togethers for Christmas and very rarely for birthdays. There is a crater-sized hole in the family. The fact that she was killed 15 feet from the door my son was behind that day cuts me every time. I often think, what if? What if she would have ran and got behind door 256 with Mason? What if she ran out the doors to the outside that were mere feet from where she was found? Would the outcome have been different? Something we will never know. My son walked by a body that day, and I hoped for so long it was not Madison, since only her and Hannah were the only ones that died in that hallway that day. It was not until months later we found out it was not her, but in fact Hannah. Does not make the situation any less traumatic or sad as no child or anyone for that matter should have to be subjected to seeing this. Months later, I found out the whole truth of what happened that day to Madison. She happened around the corner the same time the defendant emerged from the bathroom shooting. She ended up 15 feet roughly from where my son was. Had he been evacuated the opposite way, he would have walked past her and not known it. Sadly, as time passes and the defendant gets the attention and quote-unquote fame he so desperately wants, it pulls the focus off these four lives that were taken way too soon. Madison, Tate, Hannah, and Justin. Criminals currently get treated better than the victims. The defendant needs to live in a cell for the rest of his natural born life. With each breath he takes is one less than, than Madison gets to. The fact that he is even he's still here makes my blood boil. He took innocent lives, injured innocent people, terrorized innocent students, yet we get tablets and education privileges. I get it. We all have rights. What about Madison, Tate, Hannah, and Justin's rights? Right to live? Right to be here? I cannot speak on behalf of the other three families, but I know what this whole nightmare did to ours. Our whole world crumbled that day, and we are still attempting to glue the pieces back together, which they will never fit the same. Madison will never get to fulfill her dreams of graduating, going to college, getting married, having kids, and enjoy, just enjoying what life has to offer. She was slated to do great things, and please know that she would have done just that and so much more if she were still here. Why? Because the defendant took that from her. She was scared for her life, cowering down, covering her head, I'm sure just hoping he would keep walking and let her live, but no. The defendant had to execute her as if she was some kind of threat to him, which she was not, nor would she have ever been. Madison was the nicest person you would ever meet. If everyone aspired to be half the person she was, this world would be that much more of a happier place. She was a senior, as I stated before. She had only been in Oxford High School for three months as she transferred from Clarkson schools. She barely knew anyone. She was in the wrong place at the wrong time, which gives the defendant no right to execute a scared girl because he needs to, quote unquote, teach a lesson. No right to shoot anyone for that matter. He obviously missed a lot of lessons in life, whether it was from his parents, peers, or teachers. There are a lot of people in this world that have been subjected to a less than desirable home life or set of circumstances, but you do not see them out shooting up their school. It seems from everything that has come out, the defendant planned for months, researched outcomes, notated response times, mapped exits, and openly accepted his fate of spending his life in prison. So I ask you, do you feel like a 15-year-old, now 17, that put so much time and effort into this attack deserves to ever step out of those prison walls one day? 
I do not care that he had lousy parents. Maybe his brain is not fully developed, but he knows the difference between right and wrong. Yet he still followed through knowing the consequences. Most people take these less than perfect situations and turn them into opportunities. The defendant chose the opposite path. He stated in his journal he was ready to spend the rest of his life in prison. I implore you to grant him his wish and sentence him with life without the possibility of parole. Linda, thank you, ma'am, for being here, and thank you for sharing this, the positive stories as it relates to your niece. I appreciate that.